Today, we are meeting my good friend, Stu. He's got a lot of sights going on, so he's very kindly offered to take us round and show us what he's up to. How are we doing? How are we doing, mate? Good to see you, man. Good morning. Good morning. I think today then, so if we go, we've got one in Farnham, which is a seven two bed scheme, which we're just yep. building. That was a bit of a filler job to be honest, but it's turning out to be beautiful and a, a quite a good earner. And um, we've got a bank in Farnborough, which is where we were, we've done a delay completion. So we, we um, exchanged it January last year and we're looking to complete end of January, 2024. So during that time, we had this opportunity to come up from another developer. So we um, purchased it off them because they got a bit nervous with the market. Yep. And also they didn't really know the area too well. They didn't realize how desirable um, a historic market town like Farnham is yeah. and we knew that we could look at their plans and change them from we were buying four one beds and three two beds but with our internal architect team we knew we could turn them around into seven two beds so that added about another 350 grand to the GDV so we bought that we've, we've come up to the end of that now well I say come up to the end by end of January we'll be finished just in time to start this bank which is uh, going to be our biggest job to date so yeah, wow. it's, a, it's a good one. So we're going to put 18 flats in that one. What's the approximate total GDV of all of these sites that you're working on at the moment? He's got a calculator. So we've got four, seven, ten, fourteen, eighteen, about twenty-three, twenty-three and a half, something like that. 23 and a half million, which will all be built by next year. So your, your core of the original business is? Loft conversions, yeah. Loft conversions, how long have you been doing that? 22 for? years now. Wow. So my whole adult career, I've dedicated to residential conversions. How many lofts do you think you've converted in your time? Uh, well over 2,000, I would say probably 2,500. Um, Sky lofts have been going since 2013 and we've built over 800 lofts, so. We do about between 70 and 80 lofts a year. The guys we've got are amazing. I've got sort of 14 loft fitters who are almost like they're their own project managers. They could run their own loft companies, they're that skilled, but effectively we take care of all the dog work. We do all the plans, the drawings, calculations, deal with the skips and scaffolding, deal with all the building control. So they just turn up, do a lovely job, look after our customer and get paid well for doing it. So this is seven two beds. Seven two so beds. So we bought it off another developer who yep. paid 22 grand for an architect, a Reba architect, to design a poor scheme which left about 350 grand on the table. So we, we designed it with our in house team, took away, so basically what they've done is they designed it around using the basement. Yep. So it would become a four floor building. That means you have to put lobbies in and lose space on each floor. So we just discounted the basement, pretend it's not even there. It's now a three floor building, which means we could reclaim all the lobbies and um, we could reclaim all the lobbies and make them in a better design use of space to get, how are they doing, Nathan, right? Uh, so we can then get seven two beds. So the bill costs were like 800 grand plus. We looked at it, we reclaimed the space, got bigger, better GDV and kept the structural integrity. So we actually brought a cost down to about mm -hmm. or nearer 600 grand. So, um, What's yeah. the GDV on this? This one is they're about 400 grand, 425 a flat. So we're looking at what, 2.8, 2.85 uh, ish. I don't okay. know what that works out to be. But we paid 1.3 for it. So we're gonna, we're gonna spend just under 2 million on it. So it's 800 grand, which we'll leave in the building and then we'll rent them out. And we're hoping to get around 1800 to two grand a flat. So we're in flat one. So this is the entrance in here. This was one big master bedroom shown on their drawings, which was just it, insane. That's the entrance to flat one? Only flat one. Yeah, okay. flats two to seven and on the side, so we'll have a look at that. So this is the hallway through. This is their bathroom. This is where we've been using for storage. So we're a lot further back this way because we're painted upstairs. This becomes their living room kitchen. So this is one of our new windows. So we either had the choice to use the existing windows yeah. and pay for someone to come and piece out any rotten pieces, redecorate them and put secondary glazing in, or we just bite the bullet and we spend another 50 grand and we put brand new windows everywhere. And what won was the maintenance in the long term, because that's our, our big strategy, is that we don't want to have tenants in here. They're using these windows and the cords go and it's just not worth the fucking around when they've got all their yeah. stuff in here. Let's just bite the bullet, put brand new windows in, which a good friend of mine's done. All the windows to match the same detailing, there's no horns. They look stunning from the outside. You can't actually tell what's new and what's not. And these are single glazed, these are double glazed, argon filled, and uh, all got obscure glass in the bottom. So we've got another big bank of four going in here. So this is their kitchen. So the kitchen now it's up here. So we've got a nice big kitchen to about here, dining room table here, and then sofa here. It sounds noisy, but when all the glass is in, it's all insulated. It's actually quite quiet. It's only a 20 mile, mile an hour road. Wow. So uh, all the boys are framed out, ready to start closing this up. So all the old windows are coming out, literally by the hour, because the windows turned up only about a week ago. So bedroom two there, bar from here. Nice big double wardrobe, and then the hot water heat pump will go in here. And then this is their master bedroom for this flat. So that's a two bed flat. The train station is literally a two and a half minute walk, three minute walk to the top of this road, uh, which takes you straight to Waterloo. And uh, that's what 400 grand gets you, basically. What was it, uh, what was the planning journey like with this one? 
fine. We already, it was our MA, so it would, okay. we bought it with MA already, yeah. and then we just done a change of use from the um, four one beds and three two beds to, to seven two beds. So it's been been quite straightforward to us. For those for those watching back home, explain MA. Class MA, so it's a regulation that changed, I think it was 2020, 2021, mm -hmm. um, which basically meant you could take an existing building that doesn't fall within uh, an SPA, doesn't fall within a listed building or uh, conservation. I think conservation actually it does, you can apply it, but it means you can take an existing footprint and carve it up into 37 square meter root flats, minimum space standards with natural light and all the rest of it. So there's a sort of shopping list of built stuff you need to find, but you find buildings that you can tick all the boxes and then you can just apply for MA to change it. And how long does that take? 56 days, eight weeks, 56 or 58 days. So it's pretty quick, but ultimately yeah. you can get the building, secure it, get everything ripped out, and then once you've got the MA certificate, go straight in and start building. So wow. we only bought this 1st of October, and what, we mid-December, so by end of January. So five month turnaround, 800 grand. So this is the only wall effectively we had to build in this flat. That's how easy this one was. We kept all the existing walls as they were. So we've got two bedrooms, bathroom at the end, another bedroom here. Nice big double wardrobe, and then a, a hot water heat pump, which is one of these things which does, basically it stores hot water. Um, we've got solar panels on every flat, and then we've got the kitchen going in here. And then we've got a new set of doors which have gone in, new windows throughout the whole building. And then like a TV snug in there, so TV, lounge, and everything else. So lots not of natural light. We've got three roof domes that we put in, just waiting for the glass to turn up. And obviously drainage to go in before we screed it, get the kitchens in, so. Yeah, they've done well. We're in like yeah, the 15th week or something since buying it. So, so th this project has about it's about 800,000 profit. In yeah. It. How have you funded it? How much is your money versus investors? <clears throat> so we borrowed about 800 grand from an investor mm -hmm. who owns 50% of this building, and then we borrowed the rest from the bank. Wow. So we're buying we, yeah, we're borrowing fairly cheap as well because. Well, we're paying about 11% or something with a 1% in and 1% out or nothing out. Um, but the, because it's we're building it so fast that we're only buying it effectively for five months. So, but as soon, as soon as we get to January, one's upstairs, the kitchens are going in and then we're going to start looking to, to exit. Wow. So it's none of your own money in? Nothing in. No, none of the deals we'll see today, I'll put a penny of my own money in. It's wow. all been with the trust of an investor and the foresight and energy of what we bring and the opportunity, so, and then we split it 50-50. They where, put their money in, I take the personal guarantee on everything else. Okay. And that's it. Where do your investors come from? Social media, most yeah. of them. I mean, some of them are friends and family when we started, and then we used that as a bit of a benchmark, started putting some stuff on social media, reaching out to guys like you, the Fontaine brothers, I've, I've come out and done a few visits, and then their viewers have watched what we're doing, yeah. and that's how they've sort of followed in and started watching what we're up to and we only need one or two investors right someone goes I've got a million quid and I totally want to come on board that's it there's another investor and there's another whole partnership there that we'll build over the next three four five years together wow but yeah this is a communal area to here that's a private courtyard for this flat and that was the other thing we, we noticed so main things we've learned from this one from the last one we've done nine flats in Farnborough yeah the ones that had private gardens were like absolutely desirable we had like 30 people want them and we only could sell one so we made two extra ones with private courtyards um, and the other thing we learned was storage. So all the flats we put in big double cupboards. So we were trying to make the rooms as big as possible for people storage in. But people actually said, look, we could love a nice big cupboard. So it's because we've got the footprint of these ones, we've actually gone out to put big double cupboards in so people can put hoovers away, mm. storage, suitcases, Christmas trees. So that's another thing we learned from the, from the last one. So that's what we're now implementing on all our, all our sites. This becomes another private courtyard for this one. So we went for planning permission because MA is for internal change only. Sure. You can't change anything outside, but it doesn't stop you then applying for a planning application on top just to change some outside bits. So we've gone for solar panels right across the roof. We've got, all, we've got about 30 solar panels on here. I think we've got like four solar panels per flat. So again, trying to keep the, the welfare and the, the, um, the, the tenants you know, costs down as much as possible, which will make our flats more desirable over, over, over others. Um, nice big set of doors in there. So they're gonna come straight off their kitchen living room. And then that'll be their little private courtyard. And then out here will just be for bins and the bikes for five more flats. So it's a beautiful building, isn't it? It's gorgeous. All the buildings we'll see today are ones that I would be proud to keep in my portfolio. Yeah. It takes so much energy out of you doing these that I've just got to be like emotionally attached to the building. I've got to want it as part of the portfolio. And if it doesn't do anything for me and it's just a shit block on a side of a shit building, yeah. I'm not going to have the energy to do it. So once, if I make an investment or someone that works with me, I'm totally committed and motivated because I want to see the best for the building. Where is it you said there's, there's a street where you've got multiple sites on that same street now you can drive down and be like, that one, that one. 
So here. No, that's that's in, in Farnborough. We've got one, but we've got a few other options that we, we can okay. buy. That's not really at the moment. Oh no, in, oh Vernon Way. Sorry, Vernon Way's Way? HMO. Yes, we've got two HMOs on that's there now, it. but we can buy. Yeah. We literally are looking for the next two or three to do because they're just such good cash cows. Okay. Yeah, so there's there's two on that road, but. Yeah, it's quite cool. Anyway, let's go have a look upstairs. Uh, this is flat free. So that's the master bedroom for flat free. Again, lovely size. Big high ceilings as well. That's our finished height now. Yeah. And then we've got um, second bedroom. This is the only one that's got a shower room because the only one we couldn't get a bath in to make the spaces work. But all we done was pinch this amount from that side, that half of the building. This is our spine wall. So we had to put one lintel in and knock this through. Nice big shower, toilet basin. And again, because it's a rental, it really won't make a difference. Someone out of the people looking will want this one because it's have its own private garden as well. And then mm -hmm. that nice big master bedroom. And then we've got a sofa in here. We've got two TV points, so we've designed it for both. You can have to put your TV on the wall. We're going to reinstate the fireplaces once it's all plastered. <clears throat> put like a little shelf in and then a TV point down here. So you can have a dining room table here or here or however you want to live out. And for the sake of 60 quid, just give people options is good. So what would this rent for? Uh, two grand a month. It's not bad. Two grand a month. That's nice. We're going to go for all the COVID and stuff up here as well, so it will look really sort of authentic and it will sort of suit the building. So people who like a bit of character, a bit more drainage to go in. I think this is all out now, but this wasn't in literally two days ago. So yeah, we're moving quick. It gets a lot closer to completion upstairs, um, but yeah, we're not, this is what I mean, like all the cords and stuff. By the time we mucked around with these, for the sake of fifty grand, and we want to try and get premium for these fats, so if we can get four two five, then that basically puts a hundred grand in our pocket at the end of the job. So by spending really? fifty. We can make 50 to 60 grand on the refinance. So, yeah. how's how's your refinance work? Is it discounted on like a block discount? <clears throat> we've got two options at the moment. So we've yeah. got two different lenders. Uh, until we get nearer completion, we'll get a valuation done and see what the discount they allow to it. But then we're going to do an aggregated seven separate titles. So someone will lend us on all seven. Yeah. But if we've got all the titles and we spent a few grand with this listers. I'd rather keep it under one title just because it's sure. so much easier for insurances and main mortgages and, and stuff. Yeah. I don't want to have seven pieces of crap to deal with. Um, but equally, it's uh, yeah, we'll just see what the numbers say. So yeah, that's up here, yeah, cool. keeping the brick fireplace. Going to put a nice new oak worktop on there. Nice little oak step in there, paint it all black so it looks like a working fire. We've got, our, we've got it all set out now, haven't we? It yeah, works really yeah, well. We've got a specification. We know what the next project is already, so we'll, yeah. we can hand over to me and hopefully we can just build it as quick and as efficiently as possible. Cool. Without any issues or any changes. Yeah, yeah no changes, mate. <laughs> Love it. No, it's going good. We're really, like I said, we're 15 weeks into this, 16 weeks into this one, and um, done by end of January, I reckon, isn't it? Pretty yeah, much. Yeah. Now, windows, windows have held us up for a week or two, so now they're on site. We are basically getting these in, getting, getting plastered, and start second fixing. So, how long does it start to finish? on this from well we aimed for five months it'll probably take six but plus six months to this level of spec is pretty good plus another five months of legals and planning buying it uh no it wasn't that long we bought the business actually this one we oh, didn't really? buy the company first time we bought a company so we saved about 30 grand's worth of stamp cost on stamp because yeah. we bought the company at half a percent um but we had to go for a lot more stuff it's a bit more riskier as well because um the, we were taking a lot of risk off. They could have made a load of contracts in that company the day before we signed, yeah. and that they wanted that they, we wanted them to be a guarantor, and they wouldn't sign it. They were like, just buy the company, if you don't trust us. So we just bought it on a risk, but it's well, it's worked well, isn't it? And it we took a baby on the 21st of August, right? That's the first day on site. From 21st of August. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, August. October's the Chinese. Yeah, August. Yeah, yeah, August. So September, October, November, December, January. Oh, five months. Five months. Five, five months. months. Yeah, you know, and it's not every bad. building has its a hold up here and there, but. We've yeah. minimal really, the windows are all right. Slight delay really, but other than that we're, we're flying now. So it must be handy having your own internal architect. Oh mate, it's, it's a game like, changer. Yeah. Well, there's no downtime. The second I get an offer op 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 offered, so before I offer on the site, I can get it to Will's missus and she can look at it and make sure building control mm. is going to work. Structurally, I'm confident to know the building's going to work how we want to wake it work. And then the second we've had a, a shake, handshake, Ross is in there doing the drawings. So the one in Twickenham we're going to look at, I've already got the plans in. I only had it accepted like three weeks ago. We had a full 3D survey done and all the drawings in for planning. And we've managed to delay that until the end of January to before mm. we complete. So all that time is basically free money, which is like seven, eight grand a month for borrowing yeah. costs. How's it going? Yeah, good. Happy days. This was only fitted yesterday. So like now, we, now we've got windows yeah. in, glasses in, mist coaters, kitchens. So we'll just go from one to seven like in the so next two like weeks. It's a bit of a time lapse going from yeah. like one up to there, seeing the... This is Mitch, fit this whole kitchen in a day. Wow. Yeah, so, I mean, they're on day two now, I suppose. Are you on day two or day three on this? Day two. Day two? Yeah, day two. Yeah, amazing. And we've got all the stone worktops, so we've got a really deal, good deal yeah. uh, with a guy who's coming and uh, putting nice white, white uh, marble worktops, these ones, on the top, which again are hard wearing, will give us that quality of feel. 
So we're going to do a little social media on this company because they've done us a bit of a discount. We nice. uh, put their name out there. What's the name? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. We've done the deal. <laughs> <laughs> but I will find out. But yeah, that looks good. It took me 10 years to a, get the confidence to go into property. You know, even though I'm in, you know, doing the building work is like, comes like the duck to water really. I'm not too worried about anything. And even looking at like, different types of building structures, you know, none of that scares me, but actually having the confidence to start borrowing money was the fear, the biggest fear. Yeah. And oh, then really? once I started borrowing money, I realized how easy it is and how you still treat it like your own money. It doesn't, even though you're borrowing it from someone, you still treat it like it's coming out of your own bank. And, um, and we've and I've had 10 years of practicing of being a good payer, you know, having 70, 80 contractors work for us on a daily basis. You learn to be a good payer and to know that your money's not yours. And it's exactly the same principles with borrowing money. The investors are actually found it from social media. Really? So, yeah, I've had two massive investors. One's invested over a million and a half now, uh, and one has invested over half a million quid. So yeah, that's working. So it's these two in front here. So again, really close to the train station. Got the park to the right here, which is really nice to overlook. Oh, these two, perfect that's food. It. That's it, that's the Chinese and that's the old private shop. So you bought this one on the right hand side, which yep. was a private shop. Yeah, an old sex shop. But yep. That was a lot of Rushmore's, fun. Rushmore's finest, yeah. Stripping it out. And then you went and bought the Chinese takeaway yep. next door after buying this. Yep. So ultimately we spent 500 grand, give or take, to buy them both. And um, we're spending about 150 grand on each one. So that's going to give us 800 grand spend. Um, and then when we refinance them, the beautiful thing about buying two next door to each other is that mortgage companies will let you um, refinance both, even though under separate titles and they've got separate licenses, the, the mortgage company will still look at it as a 12 bed, uh, sorry, 11 bed um, cash flow producing asset. So we can get a commercial valuation on it and they'll value these up on an average of 850 a room, gives me about a million and a half pounds worth of value. So we can value, we can take our mortgage out against that million and a half. Yeah. So that means they're gonna give us 1.1 million pound back in our pocket. And then from there, we can pay off our 800 grand's worth of spend and investor. And that means we're gonna have about 300 grand left in our pocket at the end once it's done. And so now cash flow you about 30 -ish about, grand a year? About that, yeah. Wow. Just over 30 grand For a year. For those that don't know what HMO is, Yep. what's a HMO? It's a house of multiple occupation. So it's, it's where more than one person lives in the house and they all share facilities. So the, the rules are you have to have either a shared bathroom or a shared kitchen. You don't have to have them both. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Let's go. The fat, all the drainage was shit, so I had no choice to buy it. And it also had this horrible metal flue um, on the side of the building. You know what, half? You're off, you can see, I mate. Know, off, had this horrible metal flue. So even though I own the land here, my tenants still had to look at this horrible flue. So basically, that metal flue to get rid of it cost me 305 grand because I had no choice but to buy the building. But off the back of that, I then realised I could refinance both together, pull out more money, which has actually turned out better. So I'm financially stretching myself to buy and do this one. Um, but we should be done by sort of January, late January, February, like refinanced, all the investors paid back off. I put no money in, I borrowed 400 grand from an investor on a 10% return on investment. So if I got that to the end of January, I might have to extend it for one more month, but I'm sure it'll be fine with that. And then um, we borrowed the rest through Skyloft's cash flowing, basically. So from okay. Skyloft's cash flow profits, we've had to use here. I've used the money to do it, and then once I refinance it, I'll then pay back Skyloft's. So Skyloft's is obviously under a bit of pressure because it's paying for everything. And then once we refinance, we'll pay off our debt plus interest, pay off the Skyloft's deal with some profit, and then what we're left with is a building with no money in. So and what, what are the high level numbers on this? So this was, uh, we bought that one for 265, which is a whole room bigger. So it's about 400 square foot bigger. Um, we've spent about 150 grand on this one, but that's got all solar panels. It's got the loft done, full back to brick, stripped out. Um, and on this one, we paid 305, so more, but and for less rooms, only got five rooms in here, but they're all en suite and we're gonna spend about 150 on that. So we're about 500 grand's worth of building uh, of costs to purchase the building, about 300 grand's worth of building costs. So we're in for 800. Refinance it for 1.5 million. 75% loan to value is about 1.1, just under. Um, and then we can pay off our 800 grand and we'll get 900 cut 100 grand in the pocket. So we spent 500 grand to buy them both. We yeah. spent 300 grand to build them. So that's 800 grand. For 800 on both. We refinanced it for 1.5, 75 percent loan to value. So there's 700 grand profit, technically. Yeah, technically. Oh yeah, 70, yeah. of course, yeah, but we're not selling them. So I don't sure. ever look at that as profit. Really? Because it's, it's just uh, well, sits on I'm the not going to sell them. Yeah, yeah. It just sits on the balance sheet as extra profit, as a as balance sheet, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've done this little extension, which cost about 10 grand, if that, but that's allowed us to put all our hot water, heat pumps and storage stuff outside the building. So it's manageable <laughs> and serviceable. Got a little en suite in there. Oh, and this is? This is a uh, private courtyard. Obviously this is HMO, so this isn't. This uh, is not flats now. This so is you've got a joint venture partner in this. 
No, just bought it up personally. Cool. Yeah, so we own this. SW Homes owns this on our own. So I'm a little bit more involved with these because I haven't got a will on this type of job. Okay. But Barry's a great guy and he does lofts a lot of the time. So for him to come in and now build 11 rooms, for him it's just another conversion. So I yeah. just pay him well, he gets on with it. He's on a bonus that I pay him at the end when we refinance. So I've got him on a reduced rate of pay until the end and then when I refinance, that's when I'll give him his lump. Uh, and also my brother does our hot water heat pumps and the air source heat pumps. So I'm going to deal with him. I'd rather pay him 10% more but after the, at the end. So he's sort of cash flowing through his business. So I'm just trying to leverage as many people as I've got to get us to the end. And then once I refinance, I'll pay off the debts. Um, and then, yeah, I've done it as cost effectively as possible. Each one will have their own little kitchenette. The kitchenette you'll see next door, they've got their own little fridge, their own sink and their own microwave. So they can have their own facilities in their own room. Little building cupboard and then the rest of it's their bedroom. So we've got a bed coming off here, um, TV up on the wall, and then they've got a shower toilet basin going in there. Is that a plumber I see? Hello, Ashley. Yeah. How are you, mate? Good to see you, mate. This is Tyler. Tyler, Ashley's Hi, one of our in-house plumbing. Uh, he says he's an employee right? plumber. Okay. So we've got one employed loft fitting team and one employee plumber. And the reason for that is that if we've got a leak, we can react quite quickly. Yeah. Um, also, it's great to have someone on board. When you're work, dealing with wet trades, which is by far the hardest trade in the world to work with, <laughs> you want someone on call and someone as good as Ashley. So he's uh, cracking on here, cracking on with the ground floor. He's done all the first floor and the loft floor already. So we've got a little shower toilet basin going in there. That's the little extension which made this one an ensuite, which was handy. And then upstairs, so a door there into what is one of the bigger ones on this site. So <clears throat> double bed off here. New windows that have gone in just to blend in with the outside. Again, we're trying to always push for that premium. So we've just gone for some, we've gone for like an olive green color on the outside just to make it look a bit different. Bit of forest green and some nice white render so it will look quite nice on the road. So bed, built in wardrobe, and then they've got their own ensuite in there. You can see the tiles are now in, just getting the floors and uh, the walls done. Plaster in next week, so by Christmas they should all be ready to miss coat. So it happens quite quick. Again, we're ten and a half weeks in. And then through here, hallway, separate utility, which is really handy, so they can have their own washer dryer that they'll all use because they're all living here together. But it's somewhere out the way that's quiet and it's between two bathrooms. Okay. So when the washing machine's on, the tumble dryer, you're not gonna have people moaning yeah. about the fucking noise, it can still be hidden in there. Someone's still washing at three in the morning, it ain't gonna affect anyone. Another little kitchenette going in here, another bedroom. Chimney's been taken out throughout, brand new flat roof of building regulations for the insulation. And obviously all these walls are being insulated on the outside to gain more space, net internal space inside. Another little room, we'll get 850 a month for this. It's so one, two, one downstairs. Two up in the loft. Two up in the loft. And this was, the, and then a little ensuite there. And then up here, this is another bedroom in here. We've got the bed going under the slope. Little kitchenette with a wardrobe, we've got a wardrobe built in there, sorry. And then we've got a shower toilet basin built in the slope here. So this one we'll probably get about 750 a month for. But that includes the living, the heating bills, the cancel tax, you know, everything. So yeah, it's a little small, little small one. But next door is much bigger, and you'll see why I bought the one next door. This one's a ground floor bedroom. Black Friday deal. No <laughs> way. Always buy cheap when you can. They've all got their own little microwaves. So we've got a bed in here. Little kitchenette going in here, and then their own ensuite in here. This one again will be about 750 a month, not huge, but the other ones are bigger. So a little ensuite in there, and again they've all got their own uh, door entry system, so you can see visually who's at the front door and let them in. How big is this room? Yeah, uh, this one's about 12. Yeah. And then the one at the front is about 20. In this one we've got a bath in there. Oh, they've put all the bloody mattresses in. <laughs> I bought everything because it was going to be finished and then we bought next door. So it's just like, to stop this one, get next door and then when we get everything set and fixed and decorated, do it in one go. Oh, because obviously you, you finance them at the same time, you need to get them... I can't aligned. refinance this one, I might as well just stop spending, get that one done. But upstairs is decorated and almost done. Got a wow. few more days of second fix and then we're out of this one. So I'm hoping by first week of January, this will all be done and decorated, ready for refinancing. So you can see why I started with this building, looking at the space, it's like, wow, bed, chair, Nice big bench seat overlooking the park. Double wardrobe in this one. These are those little kitchenettes. Okay. So here you've got a microwave, which needs to be put back in. Full fridge, somewhere for tenants to put their ketchup, their cheese, their own stuff, cutlery and things, little freezer. And then a little cupboard at the top for their bowls, plates, cereal. So they don't really use downstairs as much. I mean, they'll normally buy takeouts and yeah. cook whatever they want, or batch cook and leave it up here to take to work. I mean, you and I wouldn't live in the space like this because we need a bit more space, but some people are quite happy to... This one's actually like a one bed flat. You can't sell it as a one bed flat, but you can still rent it. So you come in here, you've got a sofa here, little TV, nice little kitchen for them. It's got their own fridge, their own washing machine as well. So that'll take a bit of the pressure off the other five, can use the other one yeah. downstairs. And then nice big shower room. 
And then all you've got in here is a bedroom and a wardrobe, bed and a wardrobe, so this one will probably get about 11, 50, 1200 pound a month for, because it includes all the heating bills, all the water, council tax, everything's in that price. What are you expecting uh, the whole? Just under 10, about 10 grand. 10 grand a month. Yeah, with about six grand a month mortgage. Okay. A grand's worth of heating bills, because we've still got air source and solar, but it'll still be about a grand for both of them, with the council tax as well. So we'll probably make about two and a half grand, three grand a month off both of them, mm -hmm. but putting 300 grand in our pocket. Yep. If I borrowed less, then I would make more per month, but I'd much rather the money in our bank. I find it interesting, you only think about the refinance proceeds <coughs> as profit rather than the actual 700K yeah. equity. No, it's not, it's not real money until you sell it. And I don't want to crystallize that profit, so what's the mm. point of banking it? In my head, I'd rather just try and make 50 grand, 100 grand, but have a free building that's cash flowing. Because what I'm interested in is getting to 50 grand a month cash flow, not having the property. The, having a 100 million pound worth of property portfolio, only really means a lot to get to 50 million pound because the, the, the inflation will take care of the rest. You know, capital appreciation of them printing more money will get me to 100 million. Mm -hmm. But what I really care about is how much money I'm creating it per month. And if they're built to this standard and you've got good tenants, they're going to cause you no headaches. It just yeah. comes in every month. I remember actually doing a, uh, I've done my first HMO, that one in order shop, a professional one where I was paying per room. The student ones I do on the one AST, so I can still charge per room, but mm -hmm. I still get joint and several over the whole building. So it's easier for cash flow. Um, but I remember getting the first room coming on my bank, which I completely forgot about, you know, a month had passed, and 800 pound in my pocket, 813 quid. And I went for a wee at like three in the morning, looked at my phone, I was like, that is the easiest 813 quid I've ever made in my life, because I've never had to think about it. Mm. Now, based 15 years ago, I was working at b &Q, that was my whole month's salary. You know? yeah. And I'm like, what, I've just made that in, in, in five seconds of looking at my phone? And then I vowed at that point to make sure that happens every single day of the week. I want to go for a wee at three in the morning, and every single morning wake up and go another 800 quid in my bank. And that was the plan to start with. And then we've moved from that into the flats as well. Which is what was cool. becoming apparent spending just you know, a couple hours now is every, it's just all about building wealth. Yep. Wealth, 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 long-term time horizons. Yep. Building that bottom of the balance sheet and just keep adding every year. And just get more aggressive, get more confidence, comes bigger schemes. So this is the sort of basic level. Mm -hmm. When we go to the banks, which is what we're aiming to do next year, that's going to be super exciting because that comes with huge upside potential. So you're not necessarily working in the business, you're very much working on the business. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. What's, what's your job? What, how do you describe your kind of I think um, today? Well, I've got a fantastic management team, so I've got a sort of accounts taken care of, pre-build, um, delivery, and our architects, we've got two in-house architects, so the sort of high-level stuff can be done by people I trust hugely. Um, my job is to find the right sites and to sort of direct the whole company into getting the most we can out of every, every staff member. And um, yeah, I'm always looking at what we've got in the pipeline, how many lofts we've got versus what commercial jobs we can do, just to get the most out of everyone per year, really. Currently it's a vet, or it's an ex-vet, it's disgusting in there, and um, we paid 700 grand for the plot of the land, but the land goes right back to effectively where the, um, where the neighbours drive it, so there's quite a lot of frontage here. So we bought it not knowing what to do, it's so rotten inside, yeah. it might be worth just knocking the thing down. We were going to look at extending it over the extension and putting in sort of nine flats, because they've all got parking and they're all, it's a good area for sort of starter houses, because it's in such a fair, because there's so many different houses types in here, we're thinking of just knocking it to the floor and then having houses down this side, so it's all off spoiling. Yeah. And just, because it's, again, it's a bit rough and rugged. No, it's good of you to come in and fix it up and... Yeah. Yeah. It's great help, for the local help area. The local we'll see. We've got two entrances already. So the plan was originally was to go above this extension, knock this down, but use it as a, um, as a, as a mass in, mm -hmm. just put an extension on the top, and then inside we can get basically 10 flats. But the council have said they want us to make it look like an extension, so by the time we stepped it in and mucked around with the structure, it might just be worth knocking the thing down because the houses in this area are worth about 600 to 650. So if we can get five on here, which does take us past the point on that front by about two meters. So it takes us a bit further than the house that you can't see. But by having off this side, it will just be the back garden steps out slightly. So we've got five blocks here, all with parking. We're going to just basically do what the neighbors have done and just put drainage through here, put the drives from here and have like gardens and houses this size. So that's the plan on it. We have and you're going in for planning for for five houses, five four bed houses. So you're going to put five four bed houses on this. Yeah, at six fifty a pop, which works out to be about what's that? Two point eight. Six fifty times. Oh, and they're going to have linked attaches, so garages. Uh, so five, so three point two million. Paid seven hundred grand for the land. Seven thirty, all the fitties and stuff. Um, so, and we're going to go. If we do it, we're going to go for probably um, 
we'll either get the planning and then sell the land with planning if it's an easier deal or if we want to we'll build it all out with um, eco panels like utopia homes so like the concrete insulated panels that just crank together mm -hmm. and this might be the start of something we go into because new builds are a lot easier than commercial c conversions but you get the you get the real estate in the middle of town centre so we're doing a bit of a blend of everything so we're just trialing and seeing what works wow but yeah Love taking it. a step out of page out of your book mate because it's only five houses it's a minor application so we might have planning by march and we'll hit the ground in sort of mm -hmm. april may but we might just contract this out so we'll just break it into pieces package it up get the groundworks team in we'll put the frames up and then we'll get our roofers electricians plumbers in but we'll sell these because there's not enough yield on them so that's another way of trying to get more cash in the business um, so yeah, that's the plan with that one. What's the thought process behind keeping everything? The long-term capital appreciation, mate, it's, it's, it's the key. It's almost like I can go and work for a pound today and I can work, work, work go and earn a pound and get paid a pound or earn the same amount of energy that I put in to earn a pound and get paid 10 pound in the future. So I'm 10x in my energy for time in for cash today and I'm happy to sort of delay the gratification and just, you know, save you know wait 10 years before i buy my first rolls royce rather than uh, buy it tomorrow so and that's the other thing is you know, i could spend money and waste it on materialistic things or i can save the money keep you know we don't make profit we don't well, this property development is like known to be one of the poorest projects if it wasn't for sky lofts i don't know how developers would do it because having a cash flow in business that sort of supports the mortgage supports the sort of consistency of life with the staff and everything else it allows us to use any sort of cash we've then got to sort of put into developments to, to hold them. And I, I love the fact you've said that because it's one thing I always uh, said this the other day, I've been banging the drum for a while, that I, it's my, what, my, what I think is the playbook for the perfect property business mm. is a trading business that's cash generative, produces you know, free cash flow every single month for you to live on. Yep. And then because an investment development company is so capital intensive and really insane. you're just building the balance sheet, the bottom line of the balance sheet. Exactly. You need both. Otherwise, yep. you know, I have this running and joke. And that's the art, I think. Buying property and running out of money is really easy to do. Yep. But having enough money to keep bleeding, because property bleeds all the time. You always make mistakes. You always have to spend more than you anticipated. We're, we're human beings, right? We're wishful beings. We like to think it's going to cost something and it's never going to be the right. It's always going to be more than you thought. Yeah. And you haven't got this cash flow in business next to you that's going to fill the gaps along the way. That's when you get into trouble. So yeah, I think that's the art is running a, a service-based business and a property-based business and just knowing what to sort of, almost like driving a car with the accelerator and the, the, you know, the clutch. You need to know how to sort of bleed everything in together to, to get the most out of, uh, out of out your resources really. So I have this running joke, you know, the friends that are re really doing well in property, but you ask them, oh, do you want to go out for a nice dinner? <laughs> like, no, all my money's tied up in deals. Which, again, they're playing a long-term game, but I think having that trading business, that cash flow business is... E exactly. And so your bank... Is this one here next to Betfred? Is this one? A whole block there, that's it. So it's our biggest scheme to date. That's the existing building. All we're doing, construction wise, we've got £1.25 million to spend on this. And I can't see how we're going to spend it, but ultimately we're going to dig a foundation here. A little strip foundation. See that concrete ring beam? Yeah. <clears throat> that column. All we're doing is squaring the building off to here. So we're going to put a steel frame in, resin into the floors, and then we're putting a mega loft on the top. So we're putting a whole new floor on in lightweight steel and timber. Similar to. Same height as that. Okay. Yeah, so just put another floor on because. We can go three floors above ground and not have to put sprinklers in. So because we're going up to 11 metres, we designed it. We could knock this thing down and go up nine or ten floors. The council up for it, but we've got to put more parking in. So we'd have to then dig this all out, put basement in. To make an extra million quid, <clears throat> it's not worth the risk. So when we try and look at these sites, we bought it to use the structure that's here because it makes complete sense. All these bricks that are filled in, it's just a facade. The actual structure is in the concrete, in the ring beam. So we can literally knock all this out, put all our windows and doors where we want, and we can clad the building however we want, which we're going to render it and do brick slips and make it look pretty. But ultimately, all that's the only extension we're doing is that little bit there. We're bringing that up for, for, up to the top, and then we're putting a mega loft on right the way across the building to get another five flats in it. Where are we right now? We're standing in the garden here. Over here. So this is the corner. So that building of the corner yeah. is going to become our bin store, <clears throat> and this new extension is going to come the bike store. We're going to put secure parking on here with a built with a with the gate so we can have this for our office so this will become our office secure parking with ev chargers and stuff and the flats will be rented for your new electric without, Rolls Royce. for your electric Rolls Royce, yeah one day yeah. Um, and then on the ground floor so on the side of the building we've got the entrance here 
we, we were going to have these two as separate doors because we may have had to um, give up two flats for affordable housing. But we've had a valuation done on the site to prove that we're paying too much for the land and the bill costs are too much that it doesn't warrant any affordable housing. So we've had that approved now. So we haven't got to take like anything off. Viability off. assessment. Viability yeah. assessment. So now we can move these doors internally, save the cost of the two doors, and now we've got another two flats off the hallway. So everything's more manageable and we can clean the outside up. And then we've got a new office on the front with its little kitchenette, cupboard, storage, and two toilets. Mm -hmm. And then upstairs, we've got five flats per floor. So let's go and take a look. Cool. So for context, this is an old bank. Old bank. Disused. How yep. did you come across it? So a networking event. So I went to a networking event in London, met the guy whose brother took this on as an instruction. The people we're buying it from done a sale and lease back from um, 10 years ago. They bought it off Barclays, and Barclays then leased the building for 10 years. They bought it for one and a quarter million. <clears throat> and the, the, the best thing about that is I could find out all this from the from the agent mm -hmm. over a pint yep. to go, look, what's the story? So they bought it for one and a quarter. They were about to market it for offers of excess of one and a quarter, but to be honest, for a quick sale, they'll take one and a quarter. So I was flying out to Croatia the um, the following day. So I spoke to Ross, Ross come over, done a Zoom call with him when I was in Croatia at a family wedding. He showed me around the building. He took some dims that evening. He sent me over the plans, literally this outlined. We then started carving it up because we can put the stairs wherever we like. So we looked at a few options to get the most we could out of the building. I then sent that to Will's missus. She spent some time going, need to move that, need a lobby door here, need to yeah. make this work. She sent it back that evening. I reckoned we could get 18 flats in a shop, worked out the GDV, worked it backwards and said, yeah, we can put an offering at one and a quarter. So we bought it, but it was marketed to us, it was marketed to us um, as permitted development, but we know the area hasn't got permitted development. So we went back about two months in. Oh, that was subject to the foundations being allowed to take another floor. So we got that checked. That's delayed the process a little bit for us. And also, um, yes, yeah, so I was going with that. So we knew it didn't have permitted development. So about a month in, we said to them, look, you've marketed to this with us with the particulars saying PD, but there isn't PD. We've got 150 grand, 160 grand worth of costs that we have to pay to cancel. Um, so after that, we then chipped another 80 grand off the price. So we got it for 1.17, which is pretty good. And then we've now got the costs allocated to the 106. We can get it built and we should make about a million quid out of this in, in about eight, nine months. And how's it been funded? So an investor's putting all the money yep. for 50%. We're putting in the knowledge, the know-how, the opportunity, and then we'll split it 50-50. But they want to stay in for 10 years. So we've got a 10-year play with them. We'll, we'll rent the whole building out. Whether we do Airbnb for the airport, whether we do it as just normal AST, we'll see if we can find a, um, an operator who wants 18 flats that they can do on Airbnb. <clears throat> the train station's 100 meters away, which is straight to Waterloo. Gets you there in about 31 minutes. So it's pretty quick in out of London. And also the airport's just there. So aircrew uh, air have to be at the aircraft within an hour they're all private flights so they get a phone call they need to down tools go and do their a checks b checks refuel it check everything out and be ready to take off within one hour so the close they are to the airport which is why there's quite a few airbnb companies on this road so it's got good potential let's take a look let's have a look so that's obviously the site we're looking at now so it looks like a bit of an ugly duckling but what we're going to do is make it look like this so we're going up with one more floor everything you can see there we can literally clad onto so we're going to do brick slips on one side break the building up so it looks more like a terrace and then we're going to do brick slips on the ground floor just for maintenance and then put a little bit of greenery in a bit like this on the other side of the road with the hedges and stuff to make it a bit nicer and then our office will be here so um that's so looking at your office that's looking at our new office yeah with the parking around the back so this is the bank vault this is the bank vault so it's quad core core brick we're going to basically bring in a, um, we're going to take the back of the building out. So we're going to take this window out, bring in a f two five ton diggers, <clears throat> first week of January, bring them through and start breaking that thing out. And this door looks like solid lump, but you basically take the back off and then it's just all cogs and stuff. So it's not that heavy. Okay. It's just, it's still frame at the front, but you can almost cut it out. We've got one in Twickenham, you can see that. No way. It's a proper little um, job. Yeah, proper bank job. So entrance will be here, staircase up, and then you've got two flats at the back. And then our office is basically going to be inside that safe. Mm -hmm. That's like one with two doors. Um, and our office is going to be all of this space. Question for you. Yeah. What advice would you give to those starting out in property? Start small, go slow, don't over egg it. Um, start with HMOs 100% because it's a, <clears throat> a great way to, to learn. I think make sure you've got some capital, whether it's in a house, something like get out of jail free money. Um, I would definitely say that if you've got a few hundred grand, I would look to borrow half a million, look for a site that's half a million, borrow half a million and try and aim to make half a million. And those numbers, if you are a hundred grand short, you've got other capital, friends, family, someone you can lean on to get yourself out of a hole. I wouldn't start going big and start doing million pound deals, just start small. And if the numbers stack, I mean, my, I started on 300 grand for purchase, 150 build out, aim to make, <clears throat> aim to make 600. That would be where I'd recommend to, to start and then slowly build up from there.
what about for the young guys that are <coughs> 18, 19, 20 years old, not got much capital around them, no idea what they want to do? Educate. I mean, I would look on. I would, I would absolutely absorb everything on YouTube. You can learn so much about investing in YouTube. You can learn about property, different strategies. You know, your content's fantastic, and obviously your, your training program. I bought myself before I even met you because yeah. that was another part of the pie I wanted to learn. Yeah, just just learn as much as you can and start slowly, but make take action. If you don't take action, there's like almost like serial learners out there who just want serial entrepreneur learners that want to learn everything, mm -hmm. but not take a step. Um, and when you go to some of these networking events, you're surrounded by people who really want to do it. They just don't take any action. They, 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 the risk of leaving their job or working part time is not right for them, so it's not for everyone. But you know, you've got to take action. There's nothing will change in your life. Yes, one of the best ways to learn is to just do. Just do it. Yeah. If you've got 100 grand or so, you can lean on. If you run into a problem, you can get yourself out of a hole. Just take ed educated risks um, and start with a few flips. You know, literally, the permit development's about to change, so stay on top of what's going on in the in the national press. So, in the permit development from April next year, means you can take a normal house and cut it into two flats. So, just learn what the permit development rules are. How big does it need to be? How much natural light do you need? <clears throat> do you need parking? Learn this like a shopping list and buy a house for 300 grand, spend 50 grand converting it and make 50, 60 grand and own two flats. Sell them on, keep them, keep one, sell one. You, these things are out there for people to help and to learn, but you have to go out there and want to learn. Mm. And you've got to really want it because it's fucking hard work. And yeah, we make it all look fun and easy online, but <clears throat> behind the scenes, we're working hours and hours and hours. It literally consumes your life. Love it. Let's go upstairs. Cool. So, so standing here, on this floor. So we are now standing in what will become the bathroom of this flat. So these are Diddy flats. These are 37 square meter flats, but perfect for one person start homes. And the pillars, you've got a pillar in there and you've got a pillar there. And that's all we've had to work around. The rest of it is jigging around for fire eggs, making sure the doors work and you're not having open plan kitchens. So we've got a bedroom going in there, we've got a living room in there, we've got a bathroom here, and we've got a door here, and that's 37 square meters. Another flat is in here, basically. So there's another door, bedroom, living room, kitchen, and bathroom. Which again, it's all open plan, it's all stub work. This will be knocked out upstairs, we've already started. Um, and we haven't even bought the building yet. So we've actually got a keys undertaking okay. where we're allowed to legally start ripping everything out before we complete. When we negotiated down to 1.17, we said we'll pay that. We want to have a keys undertaking, which means we get control of the building. We start paying the council tax and the electricity and gas, but we own it from that point. We don't complete it for a year. That gave us the time to get the plan in. So we exchange contracts. We exchange contracts. On 10%? On 10%, okay. that, which is the investor's cash. We now control the building. We can go through all the plan planning funnels. We could take our time because we could try and save on the affordable housing. A lot of this stuff is wished through quickly because you've borrowed the money on a bridge. If it's costing you 10 grand a month, you want to go as fast as possible, where we've given ourselves the 12 months to get the planning, get what we want, mm -hmm. work with the council, give them the time to make the right call because we want them on board. We also said to the, uh, to the owner that we want to come in and strip the vault out and we want to start ripping the building back to brickwork that doesn't include, doesn't involve building regulations. So we've insured it, we valued it, and now we can, in our own time, if I've got a week next week or two weeks in January, before we complete, we're going to be stripping this whole building out. So when we come to start, not only can we um, borrow the money on day one and start putting stub walls up or metal walls up because we, we're so far ahead of the rip out stage, we've sort of cash flowed this first part ourselves. Um, but also it means that when we come to buy it, because we're now not buying a commercial site, we're buying a building site, there's more stamp duty saving to have. So we can actually show them we've started work and we've got planning permission. Mm. So now we can save our stamp duty from about 60 grand down to about 16 grand, which is again helps with the cash flow. So yeah, there's loads of benefits in creating these deals, you know, structuring yeah, them to, in your favor, because yeah. we're in that market at the moment, at the bottom of this cycle, where buyers, are, uh, sorry, sellers are scared, they want to sell, vendors need to get rid of this stuff, and if you've got the creative skill to try to package it in a way that's going to suit you financially and with time, it means we could schedule this in six months ago. We knew exactly end of January, we finished Farnham, and boom, the whole team are here, and away we go, and we'll be here till... May-ish before the second fix team's coming in. Because mm -hmm. like I said, all this is stub work, so all this will be out by January. So February, we're already putting walls up and we've got, and the, for the fire risk, because it's concrete floor, we've only got to put one layer of plasterboard up. We can run all our, all our waste pipes through, we fire foam them in and we've got one layer of plasterboard. Mm -hmm. At the last job, you had two layers of fireboard, all the hangers, another two layers of soundboard. So all that's time and money and cost. This is just done. And then through here, this is where the building steps in where that little two meter extension comes. So we're basically coming off this pillar and just building straight down to square the building off, just to give us a bit more width. There's another flat in here, which is that two meter extension out to the corner. Okay. So there's a bedroom here. So this all comes out because there's no structure. It's just part of the frame. So there's a bedroom in here. There's a wardrobe where you're standing. There's a full height kitchen across here. 
And there's a full height window here for some light to make it look a bit funky with a um, sofa, TV area, and then the bathroom's at the back. So we've just started loading it. So we can, when, the, when we're here on site, we can just get this straight out the back door, mm. straight into the skip, straight into the grab lorries. Oh, this is all been ripped out, ready to go. So we'll have all the carpets up, this will be swept through. We're just sort of compartmentalizing everything. So when we get skips here, we can start saving as much money. Got a new floor to go on top of this. Build it up, put the stairs in. But you get an idea of the sort of size of flats. So we've got another one flat in there. There's one flat other side of this staircase. There's a flat in that corner and a flat there. So yeah, we're ready to go next year. Here she is. What's a lump of real estate? That's a trophy asset if I've ever seen one. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome. So this was an old HSBC. So we're in there with a guy who buys batches of banks from HSBC so Direct. So he buys maybe eight banks for like 16 million, yeah. and then he'll go and sell them all separately and make an arbitrage deal. So he'll make 100 grand on this one, 200 grand on that one. This one, he sold it for 1.4 million two months ago to a guy who bought five from him. And the guy overstretched, he's not in property, he uh, overstretched his capital and was like, I need to release one or two. And they all said to him, if you're gonna release one, release this one, because we'll sell it quickly. Because of this staircase is protected by the Queen. The Queen owns the balustrades. One of her ironmongers 300 years ago would have built them. So the Queen owns the staircase. So it doesn't quite lend itself to service, uh, to um, rental, to AST, because one of the plans was to take the whole staircase out, split this into two light zones, to two um, light wells, and get two flats down here, two flats upstairs, and then two up in the roof. But because we have to keep the staircase, it only lends itself. So I think the guy might have got scared because he doesn't know property and gone, I just want to let, let it go. So the guy who I bought the Twickenham building from, he said, look, I've got this site, it's beautiful, have a look at it. And we were talking about 1.35 to buy it. And uh, we looked at it and the guy wasn't moving on 1.45. So we said, you know what, we'll let it roll. If we lose it, we lose it. Got to the 30th of November. The guy who sold it said he just lost his deposit on it. So he's lost 145 grand. He'll sell it to us for 1.35. And we were like, you know what? It's a bit too much, too much risk, blah, blah, blah. We knew about this staircase. We knew about other bits. We thought, you know, the risk will give you 1.2 million for it. We let him sit on it for a day. And he said, do it for 1.225 and it's yours. So we've had it valued now by a surveyor and they've already valued it at 1.35. So even if we just buy it, stamp it and sell it again, we're probably gonna make some money. But ultimately we're gonna turn this from a bank, which is a five story bank, which no one needs anymore, right in the middle of Windsor. On the day I viewed it, I went to see like four agents, just because I was here an hour early. So I went and spoke to them all and said, look, what would you do with this building? And they all said 100% Airbnb. So the problem with Airbnb is still natural light. So we can't turn it into flats that we can sell, but we're gonna go to the council, Windsor and Maidenhead and say, look, we wanna turn this into a hotel class because of a hotel class, no one lives here. It's a commercial asset, it's all standard C1. And it means that we can then have internal rooms. So like a hotel, when you stay in Mayfair and all the like in Soho, you have these internal rooms with no windows. We can basically get three or four units down here, three or four on the first floor, and then two more on each floor upstairs. So we can get like 10 to 12 units. We're going through the planning now. I don't know how many rooms we're gonna get. So the strategy with this one will be, let's get the planning change, which we're buying it. We're gonna get the planning over the next three or four months because it's still a fairly small development. No change on the outside, it is listed, but we're not changing anything, keeping the staircase as it is, turn it into a boutique hotel. And the first exit will be to go out to the market, go out to like White Brids and go to some agents and find a hotelier who wanna add a boutique hotel to their portfolio. Such a good location. I think we're gonna have a list as long as you're armed of people wanting to lease it from us. And that means that we'll just give them the whole building as it is. Mm. Say, you lease it for 25 years, we'll get a low yield on it, increase the value of the building between two, three, four million pound, who knows, depending on the, the asset, uh, on, the, um, on the tenant. Um, and we do nothing, we just buy it, they then pay it, we refund finance it, pay our investors back and enjoy a yield and own the asset long term. That's the first exit. Second exit will be, you know what, we'll actually turn it into a hotel ourselves and run it as a hotel, but I'm not going to run it as a hotel with a reception and, and you know, and, and, and all the rest of it. We're going to run it as a digital, high tech, lug yourself in, log yourself out. The basement is the whole structure of the building, so we can have what I learned from, um, from Ryan. I spoke to him a few times about it. He's got a 14 bed Airbnb. He said that you need enough space to get one of the old rolling presses, big industrial washer dryers, have all the condiments downstairs. Mm -hmm. And then what we can do is potentially build a lift in the center core, going right up to the roof into the basement, avoiding the safe. So that will keep the cost down. And then um, we can put a, a, basically have all the cleaning products downstairs and have these fully automated. So we have people checking in, they check out. The second they check out the room, thanks for staying, that will trigger the, the cleaners. And then we'll have a, an agency coming in just managing this building completely automated. So that's our second exit. How have you funded this? This one we've taken two investors and they've put in 400 grand each and they own 50% and, uh, and I own the other 50%. And you've bought the deal, gonna deliver the deal. Yep, do the whole thing hands off for them. The idea will be to turn some of these internals in, 
nice suite in here with a nice roll top bath and nice shower facilities. It'll be somewhere where the Chinese market who come to see Windsor, if they're coming in for two or three days, there's hotels everywhere, but if we can get the market right where we're just a little bit less than everyone else and they've got a little bit of character and there's a bit of charm about it, then I'm almost certain they'll be wanting to stay here. So yeah, it's beautiful. And if we have a look, it's better upstairs through there. Okay. You can't get any closer on the high street to the castle. So yeah, this is a plot, so it doesn't quite work with our normal strategy, but it was too good a building to miss up, especially for 1.2, 1.225. So the views get better again upstairs. So there's three on the front that we can have. <clears throat> and I'm hoping the international market will spend 500 pound a night to stay here. You know, we'll put all the new windows in, we'll make it look really, really nice, comfortable. Not listed, no? That's listed. It is, yeah. But we're not changing anything outside. All we're gonna do is get planning to change the windows yeah. to triple, triple, uh, triple glazed. But yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? It's incredible. So this is happening in real time now, and then the one upstairs is even better. So we've already got the emergency escape for, for um, the hotel. So that just runs off through the roof and down. We were gonna take this into an internal light well. We could still go for it and go to apartments in here, but it just, it's, I think we'll make so much more money out of the hotel market. Yeah. And obviously we've done a few of the greens on the Monopoly board. It's time to buy a few of the red ones. So yeah, it's pretty cool. We have all the air conditioning area. We'll have solar panels on the roof if they let us. Beautiful views, I mean, Windsor Town Centre is beautiful. It's like royal, very royal, it's very affluent. It's so busy and there's no season here either. So if you're gonna go and do an Airbnb, you want somewhere that's not seasonal. We've got Ascot Races down the road, you've got Windsor yeah. Castle, we've got um, Legoland, which is a five minute taxi away. So there's enough stuff going on here to, to make it work. Christmas, people come for Christmas. Some yeah, people Christmas come for lights. Summer. It's... Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's wicked, mate. It's wicked. <laughs> it's wicked. It's going to be so cool owning a hotel. Absolutely. Well, there'll be, there'll be, there'll be almost like 25 metres, square metres suites. So, yeah. nice little kitchenette. Enough for someone to go shopping and enjoy the place, but then be able to eat here, little table, almost like little mini flats, but we can't sell them as flats, but we never will sell them as flats. It'll be a cash generating income. So, it's a bit of a blend between the hotel strategy we'll get a hotel class because then we can make them whatever size we want to yeah. suit the hotel but then some of the inside ones will be really nice pictures like we'll do a big memorial of an outdoor have it all lit like an outdoor window have the bed next to it you know we'll make it themed you know we'll go around the castle and nick all the ideas and the theme colors and stuff and make it fitty feel like it's part of a like an add-on to the castle really you're gonna have so much fun doing this one i can't wait yeah it's a great and then we bought it not knowing the exit the other exit if they don't give us hotel, hotel class which i'm like 99 percent sure is that we'll do what shiro's done and turn it into a service office and then we'll either le lease it to a service operator or we'll carve it up into offices and have them as little two three beds if they want a windsor office you know it's pretty so local. it's just a commit and figure it out along the way 100 percent. but have enough confidence as the base layer yeah. to know you've got exits and options Windsor, uh, Mainland, Windsor and Mainland are going to want to do something in this building. It's, a, it's sitting as a redundant building. We're going to have them on our site. They're, they've got a bias to want to approve something. And we're actually going to invite the council here and say, right, this is the site. We own it. What do you want us to do? And we'll give them these options and we're hoping we'll sway them towards the hotel class, go for C1, and then we'll make these into beautiful little suites where someone's going to stay and visit. They're going to want to stay here and enjoy the, the whole Windsor uh, feel. Yeah, yeah, it all closes up. Yeah, they normally put a little pin in them to stop people from getting there because if you closed it, you'd suffocate, clearly. Wow. <laughs> yes, that's a... This is the vault. There's the vault. That's the second one of the day. Oh no, we saw one at... We, we didn't go to see the one in uh, Farnham. But there's one there. There's two in, two in Farnborough. There's, well, there's one big one here and there's another two at Twickenham. So you, this is going to become your brand? The buying bank, banks, the bank probably. And well, while they're available, you know, we've got to, we've got to move fast. So, yeah, they're good, but they're, they're like I said, they're prime location. The train station's three minutes from here. It's, yeah. it's on the doorstep. Windsor Castle's the view out the front every morning. All right, so we're in Twickenham. Final bank, third and final bank. This one is uh, it's beautiful. It's on the main, main high street. We've got two lovely trees out the front, which bloom lovely and uh, give, the, give the tenants who will stay here uh, a bit of privacy. So it's this one here? This one, the whole bank, yeah. So from the, the column, where the, the sole sign is, right the way around to the, uh, the wall sign is uh, our whole building. So yeah, this is it. So it goes right way around. We've got our own entrance around the side. Um, let's show you inside. I can't remember which bloody key it is. Welcome. 
Right, so another HSBC. Um, this shop used to be obviously HSBC, and you used to have the counters here, and that behind there's the telehandlers. So we're going to knock all this out. It's all lightweight stud, nice and easy. The structure itself staying the same. How many we, units are you taking to get here? Seven units. So we're going to get four units. one beds and two and three two beds. And what would the um, value be of? They're all 55 square meters plus. So they're big, big units. Um, GDV on this, if we put the flat at the back and we rent the shop out, it's about 4.1 million. Wow. And if we get a good tenant who wants to take the whole floor, then not only do we save the cost of doing another flat, we save some seal and some cost for the cancel, but we'll, um, well basically half the shop working on a yield in this area means if I can find a good anchor tenant or a PLC who wants it as a national, on a four or five percent yield, we'll get about a million quid for the shop. So, or well, just over a million pounds. So we're getting the rest of the building for free. So what we can do is find a tenant, fill it, finish this off, just give them a white box basically, and then bring them in. Once they're settled in, we can then refinance against their tenancy agreement, and that will then pay for all the building work. So we won't have to borrow or bridge anything, so that brings our bill cost down by about 300 grand. So it's quite, quite a good deal. So we're going to come in here to strip all this out, find the tenant first and see yep. if they want us to do it or they want to do it, and give them over half or full amount. And then once we've, we've got that, we'll go, we're going for planning anyway for seven flats, but then we just won't build the back one. So, so you bought this for 1270000 Yep. You're going to strip this out back to kind of white walls, white box, Yep. Find a tenant. Yep. Get them paying you rent. Yep. And then you're going to yeah, go to a, against a bank and you can say, look, now I've got this, and be able to refinance against that to fund the rest of the development. Yeah. We don't. We didn't intentionally do that as part of the deal when we bought it. We were going to do normal bridging finance, but through the TVC and through speaking to Rowan, he's like, get someone in here, yep. get this rented, and then leverage against that, and it'll be almost free money. So then we'll have a mortgage that's being serviced by the tenant here, and that debt will then have as our cash will then finish the building. And how have you funded this acquisition? This is with an investor. So we've done a 50-50 deal with investor. They put the money in. We're putting the skill set in, the knowledge, the know-how and the opportunity, and uh, we own 50%. So this one's with Will, so wife, borrow part, part, uh, properties owns half, and the investor owns half. So um, we'll come in here, and again, Will's going to come in here from sort of April, May, and do the work here after he does the bank in Farnborough. So yeah, busy Which year Which is ahead. the first one we saw this morning. First bank we saw, yeah. Yeah. So have a look around. So this lift's coming out. This lift, because the building was built prior to the lift, this has been bricked in a bit like a chimney, so it's going to literally start from the top and just break that out. Not too much work. All these walls are stud. There's some structural walls. There's like a spine wall that runs through here, and all of our designs are incorporating that, so we're not going to have to put any steels in at all. It's just literally stub work, installation, plasterboard. It's a bit of a builder's dream, really. This bit's brick, because that's the brick casement for the, for the uh, elevator, but we'll start from the top and rip that out. And then if you come through here, we've got another flat. I've got the plans on my phone, which I can show you. Um, that's the ground floor where we are now. So this is the front shop, which at the moment we were always going to put a flat in the back because more doors the better. But if we can get a tenant that wants to take the whole lot on, then we'll keep the door on the side and have the stairs going up. They'll have an emergency exit exit through here, but the rest of this will be the shop with a stairs case, staircase through the middle down to the basement for storage. But at the moment, with the plan is to put a one bed flat at the back. So we'll have a bedroom in this location. Then we'll have the living room and kitchen in that area. And then we've got a little bathroom going in here. Uh, with a doorway coming from the stairwell into here. So this is the stairs going up to the, the top, top floors. The basement is just here, down the stairs. So we'll, again, this is all stub work, so it's all easy. We can we, we can figure all this, so the shop can use it only. Um, and then upstairs, so that's the, the ground floor. And then on the first floor, we're gonna come up, keeping the existing staircase in play, put a little corridor through here for an external staircase. There's examples, we'll go outside before it gets dark and you can see the ones next door. And then we've got another two bed flat using some of the front and some of the back for the natural light. A little one bed flat here. And then as we go up again, this is the rear of the building, which we'll have a look at for, for access, for bins. Second floor is again, the exact same layout. So it's good for soil pipes and for roots out. One bed flat and a two bed flat. And then up in the roof, We've got another uh, two one-bed flats. No, we haven't. We've got a two-bed flat and a one-bed flat, but the one-bed flats have got en suite. So we've got a little WC, a little wall closet, and then a little en suite up there. So, yeah, it's quite a good size. It's wow. pretty straightforward for us to do as well. What's the total square foot? Do you know? 5,500 square foot. Cool. So we paid 1.227, was it? 1.227. By 5,500 square foot. So we paid about 223 pounds a square foot. It's about just shy of 800 pounds a square foot in this area. Do you so know your conversion cost per square foot? We'll, we'll spend less than 150. So we're in for oh. you know, a good million, 1.2 million pound profit plus borrowing costs. But if the cost of finance is done by being clever, getting this rented, we can literally board this up so we're ready. And then we can just bring everything through the back door that we're going to put in and then through the side door. And then these guys can trade as normal. So that is the plan. So anyway, yeah, we've got the old telehandlers here. So that's where the bank used to be. That's all boarded off. So that's more footprint. Yeah, right. Zone A for commercial. It is. I know, it's like going back in time, isn't it? Wow. 
Yeah, some of your uh, audience are watching this one, you know what these are, but this is obviously where you used to come and get your cash, pay your checks at the end of the Friday. Obviously an old ATM, and then there's more space here, so we're gonna knock all this out. So it'll be quite a good size shop when it's done. So here's uh, more vaults, more safes that we own. They must have had a deal with the same company because it's the same bloody make. So there's another one with another safe inside. So it's a bit of a standard process. And this to look after all the gold bars. So in here, this shows you what they like inside. So inside the door you think is solid steel, but it's actually steel plate. So we can burn all this out and cut it out. So it's not that hard to uh, break into a safe. Yeah, so we can unbolt all this and just literally cut this up and then whip it out. So it's not too difficult with the safes we've already bought to, to remove them. That's funny. It's wicked, isn't it? How many floors? You got one, uh, two, three, in and then top floor floor. So it's three floors above ground, which is perfect for fire risks. That's another criteria I look for, is I don't want to be putting sprinklers in, mm. all the costs associated with all the fire risks. Look for buildings with three floors above with a ground floor, and that's pretty much the ultimate. Because as soon as you go above that, you're looking at means of escape, fire escape, second dual call staircase. And then what we're going to do is these dormers here, we're going to take off, and we've applied for planning to do exactly what the neighbour's done. So again, it's low planning risk. So what they've done there is they've bricked up the extra floor, put mm -hmm. that window in. So we're now just going brick to brick and just going to brick and build the whole floor up. So we get the floor space upstairs and it's a loft conversion. Well, we do a lot of lofts. So it's another thing we just constantly look at and go, well, we know Rushmore, uh, yeah. Richmond. We know what the planning policy's like and we'll use old London stock brick, but that's expensive. So we'll put oversized windows in to reduce the amount of bricks we need. So it's just little simple things to, yeah. if ground here or ground there makes a massive difference when you're doing so much. Yeah, you know a good loft guy. We know a good loft company. They'll be cool little flats because we'll shape them. It's not a bad outlook, is it, really, for London? It's that London sort of vibe. We'll make them into little trendy it's little penthouses. Little Leicester Square. It is, isn't it? Yeah. You can't get a better view, really. And you've got the River Thames that you're a minute away. Mm -hmm. The road behind here is just a footpath only, so you've got all the shops and restaurants and bars. You've got Twickenham Stadium and Twickenham uh, train station, literally, on your doorstep. That's what I mean, there's prime time to buy these banks and now is the time, because they won't be around forever. Yeah, when are you gonna start on this? April, April, April May, yeah, as soon as we get planning. Plans have gone in, so we're, put, we're allowing like four months for the council to sort of work with us on it, which is double the amount of time we need. You're not gonna bother stripping it out and... We might do, it depends if we get downtime on the bank, so as soon as that's to a point where we've now got a second fixed team in, we'll bring our demo team over here to start breaking everything out, getting everything clear, because we're loaning it, so we'll just do it piecemeal, get it stripped, and then when we come to start, we can just put 10, 12, 15 guys on it and just get it done. Wicked. Wow. Top of the, top of the lift. No way. So that's all gonna be, literally, you can see it's all bricked in. So we're just gonna start from the top, cut all these old cables that all run here. We'll snip that and see what happens. That'll be funny. <laughs> Yeah, that literally has got no, a drum. Wait, so that's the... That's the cables that run it. kidding me. Well, that makes me feel nervous while getting into lifts. <laughs> yeah, well, ones that are 60 years old, maybe, True. 50 years old. This is just plasterboard and stud. So behind there is this. So it's all this. This is on the roof. All this space, it goes like a vaulted roof, goes down to the basement, but we've yeah. got all this head height here. So we can literally put in our new joists right the way around here and claim all that space, not changing the front facade. So um, all that can be reclaimed for another flat. So we're, we're standing here, so it's all behind here. Okay. We've actually applied to do two mansards either side to t take the roof up to a, like a 72 degree pitch. Yep. We don't need it, but if we do get it, it's even more space, and we'll just put a little roof there, a little roof there, and then and all these the inside. plans are done in-house? All done in-house, yep. Yeah. So because really for a, a, a developer, you know, you've got to have, you've got to be good, good at finding deals, yep. which is pretty much what you do. Yep. You then got to find the money, yep. which is what you do. Yep. And then you've got to deliver the projects, which is ultimately just down to team, and you've yep. got all Culture of that building. network. You've got, finding deals because you're out networking, you're meeting people, you're having conversations, social media is bringing you attention from potential investors that want yep. to put money with you and work with you. And then you've got an amazing team that you've just worked with for many Delivering, years. Delivering, yeah. I know and trust and yeah. I've got good plasters, electricians, plumbers. So there's the fundamental parts there, which means that there is always risk, but we've sort of eliminated so many of the risks that it gets to the point where it's almost exciting and addictive because mm -hmm. buying these things, you know, to tell your mates down the pub, you just bought another bank in Windsor or in Twickenham, it's, yeah. it's almost for real. And it's, it's like magic money because if you add the value, if we're adding 30%, because we're not obviously making a profit on the build cost as well. So from the investor's perspective, we're forfeiting the profit for today because we want to own equity in a building that we're now delivering together for the future. So they're getting it almost 15, 20% built cheaper. So you're, you're not charging, you're not charging the build cost. Margin. 
charging, no, nope, we wow. just charge 12% plus VAT to cover the overheads. Luke's got to be in the office, we've got to keep the lights on the office, I can't make Skylos make a loss to make a profit in another Which business. is more of a project management fee. Exactly, yeah. yeah, it just covers the cost for someone to put all the invoices on, to pay the subcontractors, to do the CDM management, health and safety, all that stuff has to be done by someone. It's either the investor and I'm doing it, which I don't want to do it, I want the team to do it. Mm -hmm. So the SPV just pays a, a minimal charge, but everything we buy goes on as an open book, so we've got a full spreadsheet, which the investor gets full visibility of, mm -hmm. so they can see exactly day by day what we're spending, where we're spending it, and at any point in time, they can go, I want to see invoice seven, and bang, they can see it, it's all there, so we've got nothing to hide, it's all transparent, and we do the same with our lofts as well for our customers. Do you have it in zero, or is it just, you have a run um, we, we have everything on, on Salesforce, we use Clearbooks and Salesforce for okay. all our correspondence, export it into but we it. just keep a full manual list of everything we're spending, oh, really? because we don't want the investor to see all of Sky Lofts, which is going through, we want them just to see what's acceptable for this SPV, mm -hmm. and we are altering that and changing it as we go, but for now it works perfectly. Every invoice gets manually entered, they can see exactly where we're at spend-wise, and obviously at the end, we, we and then Skyloft just invoices the SPV once a month for everything it's spent, yeah. plus it's 12% markup. So Amazing. it keeps that business ticking along. So yeah, that's pretty much a day in the life of uh, SW Homes. So we're just wrapping up the day. I mean, to, to recap on where we started off, it was a, an old solicitor's office you converted into... Seven two-bed flats. Seven two-bed flats. Yep. And then we went to your sex shop. Yep, and, and Chinese. And old Chinese takeaway that you converted into an 11-bedroom HMO. That's it, yeah. And then where did we go? Uh, we went to we went to look at a plot of land which we've just completed on for which is how many five houses? houses. Five houses. We went to uh, the f first bank, which is in Farnborough Town Centre, which we turned to 18 flats and the new office for our team. Then we jumped in the car, went to Windsor. We went to Windsor Castle, which is our latest acquisition, which is literally we've exchanged and we complete next week. Um, so that's happening. That's going to come into potentially a 10 or a 12 bed HMO, uh, hotel on a play with the SA stuff. And then we come to Twickenham to look at this one, which is another seven flats and yeah. another office, another shop here for a national company. So it's been a good, good day. Cool. So the bank man, um, thanks for being so generous with your time. Obviously, we're going to be hopefully documenting more of the progress of all these sites. I'm super excited for you. And yeah, thanks again. Please, man.